right in, Miss uh, Kimsey. You got an agenda for you? Thank you. Quick. Very quick. Uh, and I do have a minimized issue specific detail about the highlights and what they do. Since October 1st, we have been advised via various landlords' conference calls of what potentially is at risk for federal funding. As most of you know, a significant portion of our budget, we do provide all the federal mandates for the state, and over 50% of our budget, we're working 50 to 55%, currently it's about 51% of our budget is for federal money. So we are in the process of trying to get that funding back to the state and to the federal government. Um, we have a lot of things we need to do with the state to get that funding back to the state. We have a lot of things we need to do with the state to get that funding back to the state. We have a lot of things we need to do with the state to get that funding back to the state. At this point in time, we have been advised uh, by our division director that we will not receive any further funding in TANA, our temporary assistance um, to needy families, which have detailed where that impacts in the interim. Our social services block grant, our child care development fund, and our low income energy assistance program. So, specifically, at this point, Food, nutrition, and Medicaid benefits are not impacted and administration for those are not impacted. Um, our workforce cash assistance, we can take applications, but we cannot process those. Our child support enforcement is not impacted at this time, and I qualify that just for the month of October. We do not know about November. We hope and anticipate really, that this federal uh, budget impasse will be um, taken care of and it not last long. Because we do know the longer it lasts, the more it will really impact us. Uh, foster care and adoption services, through, we have 40 funding, which is a federal funding that they say we're okay for October. Our uh, impacted areas are our mandated areas of child protective services and adult protective services, which um, we would request that the county continue to fund those the mandated and have to be provided. So it would be just asking that you continue and we do anticipate that we get that funding authorized retroactively. Or I do have some ten dollars that I have not budgeted uh, currently in this budget that can cover those charges. So this time our workforce selected kind of cash is the way has, has not been budgeted yet. So um, we would look to use those dollars to have a budget that's passed. Uh, guardianship funding is covered with carryover funding from um, um, our social services block grant. All of the aging services, senior services, home care, community block grants, with the congregate meals, home delivery meals, uh, adult day <coughs> care, majority of those services are covered under the home care, community block grant, and they're okay for all time. Period of child care subsidy, we assign those dollars to Southwest Child Development and they are monitoring it daily to decide whether or not we can continue to um, rely on their funding to make sure that that continues. Um, they anticipate it would be retroactive also if we could get those funds authorized. And then our heating uh, energy assistance programs, they don't start to make it first for our process intervention and our low income energy assistance, but does not start until December first. So at this time, we don't know about those, but we're not, we're not loading those, so to speak, or, or providing those at this time, because we don't start to make those. So again, my closing paragraph, as you can see, it says, a lot of it less, the worst it can be. Um, We've just been asked to come and advise the county, make sure they're aware of it, and to ask you to continue to provide the mandated services of child protection and adult protection um, with anticipation of the new funded retroactively. How much you ask? Well, it, it's at risk is about $2,600 a day, and that includes all salaries, fringe, overhead, the entire program. That's 
salary, it starts with salary, then your fringe, and then all the overhead. So uh, all of the supervisor time, everything in space. We have an indirect cost plan that benefits the county too, about $900,000. Uh, and that's also cost allocated to those positions. Everything starts with our work. So that, we understand this, but I don't fully grasp this right. government shutdown. So they, these are things that we're mandated to provide, but at this point, the federal government is not providing the money for them. You got it. That's correct. And at some point, you anticipate when they do, do whatever they do, that that money will be released. For the mandated services, I think. Yes. For mandated services. Do you know how long you can carry then with what you've got? With what I've got in our budget. Well see again, the dollars that we haven't budgeted yet are fifty dollars. Right. But we do anticipate those will come through. Um, Thank you, Tana. If you don't have a Tana fund, do you have a Tana fund? The ten of dollars of what we have not budgeted yet, the cash savings, with the federal dollars. So they're not available for two weeks right now. We would have several scenarios and plans to come back to you to try and make those dollars up if it's not funded retroactively to October 1st. But I guess to reassure you, you, you do provide our services in advance. So everything is reimbursed in our way. The only thing that Right now, that we're being told we can't fall down with those funding sources that I have built with this detail, and that's that's twenty six hundred of that. And that does not include the child care subsidy dollars. That's all of this this statement. If this thing goes on for another week, ten days, how long before we get something? Well. Yeah. And that's where it gets very difficult because we're providing mandated services. I can't send mandated. I've got to provide the adult protective service and child protective service. So those folks from the standpoint do not work? I may, yes, someone has to provide that service. We would come back to you with a plan of how to provide that service. But you have to be trained and certified to provide those two. So you can't just use anybody and we do what you want. And on the energy assistance, which is so important mm -hmm. to our area, uh, what I heard Friday was that nobody, and there's no other, there's no other source of money unless it's local For the energy assistance. For the energy assistance, there's no. The state was going to had an idea one time of setting aside some money, but then they said how much we can be in. Well, and they were still trying to determine if they had any carryover funds for where they drew some down for the counties that use it for cooling purposes that were in the process. Did you hear anything about that today? We did not hear it today, but we have um, NCACC conference call on Thursday that we anticipate will give us some direction. It's supposed to be a, we just have to, if they are somebody, we just want to make, and how they disperse it, we want to have a, a say in that something to get our, <coughs>
But on that call Thursday, the only thing I'd ask is I will be on the call. Just this will be a topic for him to me because I definitely speak for the rural counties and our counties and so he'll be in that. But Friday they said that we had a good possibility that the rural counties be involved and if they are money in that pot. Uh, if you'll stop for us, I will keep this for the stock for the Or if we take any action, or we just sort of continue as we are because it's a reversal. Okay, so no action. And we will continue to get updates. We anticipate a letter today because they've been in hearings all day today, so we didn't get one. We're trying to keep a brisk day of, of, of what they anticipate and funding is available. And that's difficult. I think Sherry Brazier, our deputy director today, told her. Um,
No, we do have. We actually sat down almost four years ago for help and created a hierarchy of programs um, that we had to eliminate based on funding that we would eliminate. Uh, we already have plans in the work, the same as Jane, for meeting with our board, but ours is supposed to be in the month. We have to call a meeting with the board uh, if the chair so desires. I uh, have a conversation before that. Um, but we are going to provide several different options that the board can choose from uh, that we will have to probably bring back to you by the end of the month. Um, to answer the question real quick that Jane answered a few minutes ago, it's about $2,096 a day uh, starting the first of October for us. And uh, is what we're last, or what we're uh, generating in charges uh, that, that, uh, that there's no federal money to cover. We had nothing last salary to cover up through today. Um, so after a day, anything we do is uh, that cost back and hopefully just reimbursed uh, when, if, if they do reinstate those grants. If you have any specific questions about cost of programs, I mean, that's not we have all that information. I just didn't get to go here all of that this evening. Thank you. I'll just say this publicly. I, the month has been watching this week continues to remain, uh, regardless of where you are politically, the impact of my business is before the CARE Act passed. Uh, and I'll just say this. That, the insurance companies are ready for it, and uh, this federal exchange system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, they can't get the computer in three years. Amazing. So, well, no time fast has been going for how many years? Seven. They said all they do is make a phone call. And it is totally different. Yours is one of out of the hundred counties we got nineteen that work. If federal government would stay out of the health insurance fifth North Carolina had had that already solved, but you know, that's that is I'm editorialized, I'm realizing Yes you are. I'm calling Or you think we'll hold Anyway, thank you for your report. We appreciate that. And we recognize the dysfunction of Washington stuff too. And uh, we hope that uh, we solve this something. Thank you. Um, I've got a question I'll ask just before we go over on this topic. I realize that we're an arm of the state, and I'm funded mainly the things that we have to do. In Raleigh, if they say we will pay for something, we have to pay for it. We don't have a choice. That's something we have to stand on. But does this exactly stand the same way with the state, the government? I think it is in this situation. In a sense, these programs are sort of passed down from the federal to the state, the state to the local, if you will. Um, and so, at, at, at the risk of oversimplification, I think we're stuck with it on those things that are mandated by statute or by rule or by regulation. I think in, in, in the long term, if, if situations aren't worked out, I think we can't have Well, their political thing. solution is sure. You know, we're not going to do it. They're not going to put us in jail if we don't fund something. Or what don't we're not going to fund so. I guess one of the questions I really can on this right here, you take the BP with a basketball, and with the BP and other basketball, they're dry. All they got to do is press the button, we're dry. What are we doing before we go whenever they cut all the funds out of there? And we've been paying taxes more like the way we should have. Well, you know, I, I, I don't, I hate to even address that in the hopes that it never come to pass, but uh, obviously, should that come to pass, you know, those are the types of things that uh, require leaders, local, state, and federal level to start making 